Hi everyone, thanks for listening to all my presentations. Today I'll be talking about hepatitis D virus. And hepatitis D virus is different from hepatitis A, B, and C. Not only because of the nomenclature, but because hepatitis A, B, and C can all cause infection on their own, although there could be co-infection with other hepatitis viruses. But hepatitis D virus cannot cause any signs and symptoms without being co-infected with hepatitis B virus. Why is it that hepatitis B virus must be present before hepatitis D virus can cause trouble in the system of the affected individuals? We will know all those facts today. So, let's go over the history, epidemiology, the genotypes, and the diagnosis of hepatitis D virus. Hepatitis D virus is also known as hepatitis delta virus, also known as hepatitis delta agent, but hepatitis D is most preferred as the nomenclature. Hepatitis D virus is dependent on hepatitis B virus, always code infected with hepatitis B virus. And why that? We will soon know in the next few minutes. Epidemiologically, antibodies to hepatitis D virus could be acid, but could be missed in the face of acute hepatitis D virus infection. And why that? Because the antibody is a late development in the infection. It could be missed and because of that, we need to have repeated testing, and that will help. It is fair to say that the time incidence is not known, based on the factors above that the antibody could be mixed. Antibodies to hepatitis D virus will disappear after a long time post-acute infection. The patient presenting today may not be known to have passed hepatitis D virus infection or not. Antibodies to hepatitis D virus is present in high titers in chronic hepatitis B virus carriers with hepatitis D virus super infection who has progressed to chronic hepatitis D virus infection. In other words, antibodies will be high in chronic hepatitis D virus infection, but we need a repeated measurement in acute phase to be able to pick that. And sometimes anyone already with past infection may not Know, be showing the value of antibodies to hepatitis D virus because it can disappear after a long time. About 5 to 10 percent of hepatitis B virus carriers are actually infected with hepatitis D virus. Increased vaccination against hepatitis B virus has led to a decrease in hepatitis D virus infection. Predominantly transmitted sexually in some parts of the world, which means in some parts of, of the world, it is not transmitted via sexual contact. Italy was known for hepatitis D virus endemicity, but you know what? That has changed for better now meaning the rate has dropped in Italy. Resurgency of hepatitis D virus is now found in Mediterranean and Central Europe. Immigration is to be blamed for this. Why that? Movement of people from 
endemic regions and to endemic regions is to be blamed for the resurgency. Genotype 1. Genotype 1 hepatitis D virus is found in the Western world. Acute hepatitis D virus is leading to acute liver failure in that region. Chronic hepatitis D SSR based liver disease due to hepatitis B virus. In other words, when there is hepatitis B virus and there is chronic hepatitis D virus, the rate of liver damage will worse or will surface again. Progression into liver cirrhosis will be very rapid and it could be asymptomatic, particularly in asymptomatic carriers in some regions, the Western world. There is increased risk of hepatocellular carcinoma. We could get you know, the background about all this when you watch or listen to my presentation on this channel as per hepatitis B virus. There are four presentations already published on hepatitis B virus. Genotype you know, 2. That could be found in the Far East. It is less acute and less acute liver failure. The progression is also less. In other words, less trouble with genotype 2. Genotype 3. This could be found in Latin America. This is responsible for hepatitis D virus outbreaks in Latin America and it could be responsible for the fulminant hepatic failure in some patients with hepatitis D virus. Genotype 4. This is found in Africa. It was formerly known as genotype 2B. The characterization is less recorded here. Hepatitis D virus is closely associated with hepatitis B virus. We will know why in a bit. Hepatitis D virus can replicate without help. Let me repeat. Hepatitis D virus can replicate without the help of hepatitis B virus. But complete viral assembly and secretion of hepatitis D virus cannot happen without the help of hepatitis B virus. Let me repeat. If anyone acquires hepatitis D virus, replication is possible without the presence of hepatitis B. But that cannot you know, be complete and can't cause any trouble without the presence of hepatitis B virus. Therefore, for infection of hepatitis D virus to manifest in clinical signs and symptoms, the affected individual must have been co-infected with hepatitis B virus. And this is key when it comes to any presentation on hepatitis D virus. The relationship between hepatitis B and hepatitis D. Hepatitis B can survive without hepatitis D. But hepatitis D cannot survive without hepatitis B. It is noteworthy that hepatitis B virus replication is suppressed when there is co-infection with hepatitis D virus infection. But the mechanism is not clear. The RNA is a single-stranded cycle and there are eight genotypes. Only hepatitis D antigen is found here, unlike hepatitis B, where you have service antigen, you have envelope antigen, you have core antigen. Here you have only hepatitis D antigen. 
two forms of hepatitis D antigen are co-expressed in anyone infected with hepatitis D virus. The life cycle. Hepatitis D virus RNA in hepatocytes in the nucleus, and then replication is activated by hepatitis D antigen when the antigen binds to the RNA of the hepatitis D virus. Then, a large hepatitis D antigen will surprise hepatitis D virus replication. Packaging of the viron is through the interaction between the extra 19 amino acids at the C terminal end and the small S protein, hepatitis B surface antigen of the EPA hepatitis B virus. Then, the completion of the D viron assembly and release will occur in the presence of hepatitis B virus, which provides the envelope. I think we got it now. Without hepatitis B virus providing the envelope, there is no complete you know, activity of the viron assembly and there is no release of hepatitis D virus. Diagnosis. In acute hepatitis B virus and hepatitis D virus code infection, we will go for hepatitis B service antigen and type body to hepatitis B core antigen and the IgM, which will come out positive. Then, we want to know what is happening as per hepatitis D antigen in the serum. In early infection, it will appear and disappear very fastly. But serum hepatitis D virus RNA will last longer than the antigen. Antibodies to hepatitis D virus total will be a late picture and even a lower data. Antibodies to hepatitis D virus and IgM will be transient and may be the only marker we are going to get as for hepatitis D virus. Liver hepatitis D antigen is not even required at this stage. In acute hepatitis D virus super infection, we are going to pick hepatitis B service antigen that will be positive. Antibodies to hepatitis B antigen and IgM will be negative. Serum hepatitis D antigen will be early and short lived. Serum hepatitis D virus RNA will be early and could be persistent. Antibodies to hepatitis D virus total will be rapidly increasing. And antibodies to hepatitis D virus and IgM will be rapidly increasing and could be persistent. Why liver after this D antigen will be positive here. In chronic hepatitis D virus, then hepatitis B surface antigen will be positive, antibodies will be negative, and serum hepatitis D antigen will not be detectable. Serum hepatitis D virus RNA will be positive. Antibodies here to hepatitis D virus will be very high. Remember, it will be gathering momentum from the acute to super infection, and now in chronic state, it will be very high. Antibodies to hepatitis D virus and IgM will also be high. Liver hepatitis D antigen will be positive, but may be negative when it is too late to be measured, or when we measure it too late in the process. Chronicity of hepatitis D virus. Acute liver failure will likely occur in acute state. Asymptomatic will be the state in carrier state. The predictor of mortality here is the 
persistency of the hepatitis D virus replication. And also, the predictor of mortality could be a factor of the genotype of the hepatitis D virus acquired. Mixed infection with different genotypes and distinct geographical areas will also account for the degree of mortality. There are some facts that we need to share together. If a patient is anti hepatitis B service antigen negative, he or she is susceptible to hepatitis B virus infection. Co infection of hepatitis B and D will result in acute hepatitis B and D, but it will be transient and self limited. Progression to chronic infection is the same with acute classical hepatitis B virus. In other words, the presence of hepatitis B virus would determine the progression to chronicity. Hepatitis D virus infection can only last as long as hepatitis B virus infection will last. Still on some basic facts, if unrecognized carrier of hepatitis B virus, meaning hepatitis B Soviet antigen carrier is infected with hepatitis D, there will be a severe acute hepatitis, or there can be exacerbation of a chronic hepatitis B. Hepatitis B replication is usually suppressed by hepatitis D virus. Before hepatitis D virus can cause a significant damage, it must depend on the following. The genotype and the antigen species of hepatitis D. The host immune status and response. And of course, the availability of hepatitis B to help with its own genotype and replication. With this, I've come to the end of this brief presentation, introducing us to a different virus called hepatitis D virus, which cannot survive on its own without the help of hepatitis B virus. The next presentation will be all about treatment and prevention. Thanks for listening. Remember to share. Remember to subscribe. I appreciate it.